and welcome once again to NIWFA Lockdown, the show which goes behind the scenes with clubs from across the NIWFA leagues to see how they are handling the current lockdown situation. Our featured club this week is Carmani Athletic, who, in my opinion, are the best club in the league, although I might be a little bit biased in saying that, as it is my club. Anyhow, here's how we got on when Colin caught up with us earlier this week. So thanks very much to the ladies from Carn Money joining us this evening. I'm going to start with Lauren, Lauren McCann. First of all, Lauren, thank you very, very much for doing tonight's introduction to the show. Really appreciate your input in terms of that. How did that feel as an experience doing that? Um, it was actually okay. I thought I was going to be a lot more nervous doing it, but I think it's because I just walked away from my family and did it in my room so they wouldn't make fun of me. So it was fine, yeah. To be honest with you, was it a first take? No. Because <laughs> that would be the first take I've been given a job of and letting you take over to be honest with you. Uh, the reason why I give it to you obviously because I'm conscious of the fact you obviously want to sort of try and go into sports journalism over the course of time do you want to give us a wee bit more about what your thinking is behind that um, yeah so since I've been younger like I've just kind of I always figured I wasn't going to be a professional footballer that kind of came pretty early on <laughs> okay. um, so I just like started writing about football when I was younger, just doing match reports and stuff. And then recently I've started my own blog and just tried to write more in-depth stuff. And then I've written some articles for some newspapers and stuff and I've got good feedback on them. So that's what I hope to do in the future because I enjoy it as well. Like I work for Tiffinville at the weekends, you know, doing their Twitter. And yeah. I just really love it. Like just the environment as well, being in a press box and just the hustle and bustle. Like I just think it's for me. Yeah, don't know yeah. what else I would my, mine and your paths, of course, cross quite a bit during the Irish League during this season, as you well are aware of. Uh, certainly, like yourself, I miss the buzz of the Saturday afternoons and things like that as well, but hopefully in time it'll come back. Now, as a journalist, I know you, you have to sort of give uh, no, no biased opinions whatsoever. So let me throw something into the mix here. Whenever Premier League starts back, whenever Liverpool eventually win this league, you have to agree it's a tainted title, isn't it? No. Yeah, <laughs> say that at all no considering our performances throughout the season I think we've fairly merited it like just yeah, a temporary well, break <laughs> if the season plays out I was just testing it out to sort of see what you exactly you were saying in terms of that, but you're 100% right you, you passed the test well in terms of I'm going to come next to Aaron McCauley Aaron first of all once again thanks for coming on to the show uh, I'm hurt I've been told sort of in, in the background that you have a bit of a reputation of being a bit of a freak free kick <laughs> Taking a very good free kick. Is this is this a truth or is it just a, a rumour that's doing the rounds at the well, moment? Well, I mean, I don't want to sound uh, too boastful, yes, but do. yeah, I've scored, I've scored a few. You like it, but I wouldn't say, um, don't put them all away, but I've scored a couple. I've scored one or two, uh, and important ones along the way, to be honest as well. Let's be honest about it. <laughs> as a club, you did take part in an interesting challenge. I noticed there, you very kindly let me see a video of it. It was a uh, one alongside. Queen of the South, the Scottish side. So, do you want to give us a wee bit yeah. more of the background how that came about? Well, I think I think they actually did it first, um, and we had been over in Scotland playing them uh, not long before. Obviously, the league, um, obviously all the football stopped, and we ended up in in this lockdown. So, uh, they did it first, and we just kind of thought we'd be follow and sit and see if we could we could do it better, and made it a bit of a a trend throughout the squad to see if if everyone could do it. And it's a joint one, obviously, between both clubs you've produced now. Is that a joint video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we, we did our part, they did theirs, and then we, we kind of merged them together since we've played with them before and there's kind of like a link between the, the two clubs already. Well, that's, that's really good to see a link developing between those two clubs, obviously. Listen, we're going to have a quick look at this video now to see how you, both yourselves and the girls from Queen of the South got on. So we'll have a look at that and then we'll come back and we'll talk a bit more about football after that.
next to joining us here on NIWFA Lockdown, we're joined by Aisling Gray. Aisling, good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you. I have no way to look through your biography, so to speak, what's been sent through to me. One thing jumped out to me is that you've been studying classical civilization. That yes, seems to be I have. Red posh for a footballer. Do you want to <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us what exactly classical civilization is? Um, well, classical civilization is like the study of ancient literature and culture. So, like um, ancient Greece and ancient Rome, and then um, it's a bit of everything, really, a bit of history, a bit of literature. Um, culture as well so it yeah, sounds very highbrow does it not um i don't know maybe <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the long-term plan in terms of that um well i'm hoping to go to university um in september like right. if it's if it uh starts then i'm not we're s still not sure when yeah. but hopefully um yeah i'll go to uni and study classical civilization with english literature um, if all goes well with the grades and um, everything. So, yeah. And then after that, I'm not sure. I just um, that year. doing what I enjoy and see where it takes me. Yeah. Did you actually get an upper six the exams? Did you get them finished or what, what actually happened? Um, no, or, uh, all A-levels were cancelled. Um, actually, all um, external exams were cancelled. So we never got to actually sit them. So they're giving us um, a predicted grade instead. Do you think yours will be better? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. so, so. I'm sure you've done well enough. As a club, you did sort of football-wise, and you did like a sort of what's called, I would call a, a celebration challenge, which is where you tried to reenact famous footballers' gold celebrations. Did you mm -hmm. take part in that one? Um, no, I didn't get to do that one, but I really enjoyed watching that one. Mm. Actually, it was quite funny to see um, which celebration each person picked. <laughs> And from each player, yeah, it was good. That Did you have a favourite one? Um, I think actually Lawrence was my favourite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Listen, once again, we'll let the viewers have a quick look through this is what's called the Celebration Challenge. It's where come money uh, ladies come on athletic actually sort of reenact the, the celebrations of well-known goal scoring celebrations. So here we go, have a look at this one. <laughs> So we're joined finally this evening by Kerry McEwen. Kerry, I obviously know your face from going back a couple of years. I'm right in seeing you were the top goal scorer for Chimney Corner ladies back in 2018, I remember. Yes, you would be. You have so a good how memory. You, how come you jumped across from Chimney Corner to Kermone? Uh Distance just, really. Right. Um, it was, too, it was Getting out of work, it was too hard to get beyond them but for kickoff times. So that was basically the height of it. Um, you played much last season for, for Kermone, did you? Last season, yeah, um, pretty pretty much all of it. I picked up an injury in the middle of the season, um, pretty bad one on my shoulder, so I missed a couple of games and then was back for the end. And did the goals follow you? Um, well, championship is another challenge, isn't it? So a yeah. few of them did, but not quite so many. No, as long as you were finding it back then at the old time. Huh? Yeah. Another interesting story I've seen about you are a couple of other bits and pieces. I understand you've got two dogs like myself. Mm, yeah. Lots of the dogs we've got. What have we got? Uh, two King Charles Cavaliers. Two King Charles, two Shih Tzus, to be honest, and they're right, paying them behind at times, but they have them once the well. But uh, the other thing I was, I was interested in was, I think as a youngster, you actually, uh, the right and you trained with a female football team over in Napoli in Italy, is that the? No, so that's right, yeah. Um, it just came up by chance, really. I was over there for the summer. Um, they asked me to come along and train with them. I ended up going on a training trip with them um, into the south of Italy, and I'd tell you, with training in 40 degree heat is something else altogether. Yeah. Was the training much the same as what we have over here, or is it just yeah. altogether? 
It was really, really intense, to be honest. Um, the trip that I went on, they controlled everything that you ate. You got weighed first thing in the morning, you got weighed in the evening. Mm-hmm. You had morning training to do, afternoon training to do. It was really, it was really intense. And what age were you when you did that? Maybe about um, 18, 19. It was a okay. long t- lifetime ago. <laughs> so did that might give you a bit of an inspiration maybe to take it up full time? Or to try it? Um, it, it, it did, but I, as I got a little bit older, I was had real bad trouble with my right knee and um, caused me to take a bit of a break from football, to be honest, until I got that sorted. So it was like for a couple of years. So that kind of, you know, put a, put a dampener in the middle of it. Yeah. Fair enough. I I'll also, you also are an office manager for Clean's Bookmakers. Mm-hmm. I was just saying to you, what's the odds in the women's season getting going again? I have to them. Hi, Lou. You probably know more about that than I do, do you? <laughs> Probably not, to be honest, but no. I think we're all in the mood of illness, you know. It's really unfortunate, isn't it? I'm obviously very eager for it to get going, but yeah. sort of it's same as anything. It's There's probably other matches going to take priority over the Women's League, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunate the way it is. But um, fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, don't know how many seasons I have left, so <laughs> eager to get another one. You're not that old. You've got a few more to go yet, to be honest. <laughs> the air's open, aren't it? Listen, girls, it's been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you tonight, obviously, with our current money. And uh, obviously, uh, I wish you all well. Hopefully, it won't be too long before I get to see this chance playing once again on the, on the football pitch. And thanks very much for taking part in the NIWFA Lockdown this evening. So that completes this week's episode of NIWFA Lockdown. Thanks so much to the girls from Car Money for taking part, and in particular to Lauren McCann, who did the introductions. As we've said before, and I'm sure we'll say again, if your club would like to get involved in a future episode of Lockdown, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And you can do so either by email to the email address now showing on your screen, which is 1880video at gmail.com. Alternatively, just drop us a simple message through the NIWFA Facebook page, and we will then get back to you to make sure that your appearance can actually happen. It's vitally important at the moment that football for women in Northern Ireland has a voice, and this is your chance to let your club's voice be heard. Thanks so much for watching today's show. Till the next one, stay safe, take care, and it's bye for now.